Hello, I'm Pastor Calvin Jefferson, and I'm so excited about this message today. Get ready, because we're going to another level. God bless you on today. All I can say is, wow. You know, as I think of on today, this is the last Sunday of 2020. We have went through 52 Sundays, and this is the 52nd Sunday of the year. And to come through this far to see how God has brought us, how far he has brought us, the things that he has took us through, and we're getting ready to go into another year. Some people didn't make it through this year. Some people called in there cars and say, you know what? Enough is enough. God called their ticket and said, it's time to come home. Some gave up the ghost. And as I look at all the things that we experienced throughout this year, to know that we have made it through this year, through the good days and through the not so good days. And to just stand here today and to say, God, you have done so much for us. You have brought us so far. And to understand that as we look over our life, let's take a look at this year. I mean, we have experienced things that we said that we never could have imagined what we could have went through this year. I mean, with the pandemic of COVID, with financial hardships, with the loss of loved ones. I mean, this has truly been a year. But I can say through it all, we're still standing. God has allowed the light to shine on us. He's allowed some of us to keep roofs over our head. He has put us into a place where he is giving us strength to just say that you can make it through another day and to all of you that are watching today that for those of you who are listening I want to say that I want to wish you a happy holidays I want to say that God bless you as we're walking into a new year because in this new year I came out of came into 2020 and said this year is going to be big and for some of us God has expanded our borders increased our territories we have started doing things that we never thought that we can do God is giving us jobs that we never thought that we can have God has given people businesses that they never thought they will become business owners but God through it all he's still been good to us and I want to say this today we're still living in the season of the now as you read the scriptures you'll find out that there's so many people in the Bible that had a now kind of testimony. They had a now kind of experience that, God, I need you in my life now. I mean, how many of you out there can say that you got a testimony that you had a right now need from God? You needed God to step into your life. You said, God, I can't wait next week. I can't go another day. Lord, I need you in my life now. I need you to come in there and work some things out in my life. I need you to come and move some situations. I need you to come in to, to mend some broken pieces in my life. I need you now. And it leads me to a certain patriarch in the Bible. And his life story deals in a, a level of faith, trusting God through his now experience. And, and as I look at his life and I read upon what and how he was able to trust God, in the midst of terrible things happening in his life. And I ask you this today. Will you be able to trust God in the midst of whatever you're going through? No matter how bad it may look, no matter how uh, 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 uphill that you may need to climb or how deep that valley is. But then I want to ask you a, situ a question. When you get into a situation, what will you do? Will you throw in the tower? Will you say, you know what, I'm going to fight this fight. We love now stories. We love to see how God brought them out of the, the issue or the struggles that they were going through. And then you say, God, I need you now. And you see how God showed up and he showed out. And today I want to talk about the story of Daniel. And you know, his life is tells it in so many different aspects but today I want to focus on one area of his life of how he needed God to come into his life right now and as he came into his life he showed him he said God you know what I'm trusting you with everything that's in me and I need you now and looking at his life and seeing that how he was able to come out of a terrible situation because God came in right now and if you got your Bibles, I want you to go with me today to the book of Daniel, the first chapter. 
And some of you, if you're at homes, if you got your Bibles, I want you to go. Uh, you, I want you to go run and get them real quickly. If you got your phones, I need you to get another uh, computer object so you can stay watching me. And I need you to get your Bibles. And I want you to turn to the book of Daniel, the first chapter. And I want to start reading at about the eighth verse. Daniel one and eight. Daniel one and eight. Read, sir. But Daniel purposed in his heart. He did what now? But Daniel purposed in his heart. Read, sir. That he would not defile himself. He would do what now? He would not defile himself. Read, sir. With the portions of the king's meat. Hold it right there. And I want to talk about a little bit about the early stages of Daniel's life. He was a part of the tribe of Judah. And now you understand that Judah are the worshipers. Those was the ones that would go out and before the battle and they would worship God because they knew that God was going to, if they worship the right way, then they knew that God will give them victory in the battle. But here now you see that they were taken captive. Something had taken place in the course of their lives that now the Babylonians have come in and they have taken Daniel and a few others to be hostages and to be slaves to work in their city. And now you see that what Daniel now, and you read this chapter in the first chapter, you'll see what Daniel now and some of the other ones, they took them and they took and they gave them new names. So when you go into one city into another one and now you're their slave, you're their property. And while they were under their property, under their rule, they said, your name will no longer be this. We're going to give you a Babylonian name. And what Daniel them did, Daniel stood and he said, I will not take on the name of what your slave masters are trying to give me. I will not do some of the things that you're asking me because when he was in his country, when he was in his land, they worshiped God, they prayed God, they worshiped freely. But now they're in a place where they have been taking hostage. They are now in bondage and now the Babylonians have them doing what they need to do. And so what they did for all of those that they took into slavery and Babylonian, they caused them to eat what they ate and they caused them to pray how they prayed and they caused them to dress how they dress and they gave them new names but now Daniel said we would no longer be called the names and I'll go ahead and I'll jump there were three more individuals that came out of this same story and there were three individuals and we know them by the name of Shadrach Meshach and Abednego and they were given the names by the Babylonians but then now they were saying that wait a minute we come from a land where we were able to worship God we come from a place that we were able to serve God freely but now we're in bondage and we cannot serve God to way that we serve God in our own land. And I wanted to remind you of something today. Let's take that story, and I'll pause right there for a moment. Let's take that story and let's look at the fact that where we at today, God closed the church's buildings down and he said that I'm going to allow you to go into a place where you don't come in to worship freely like you were once able to come freely. Some of us took it for granted when you had the opportunity to come to church. Some of you took for granted that you had the ability to come and go as you please. But now that the church doors are closed, the building is closed, now you're in a place where you're going to have to trust God with everything that he has put in you. You'll see that these three characters here, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and now we go on to Daniel, they would not bow down to the things of what they were involved in. They were not going to allow their lives to conform of the situation now that they were into. See, what happens is that people now are starting to conform because the church doors are closed. I talk about those saints that had those quick rich or the, that, that quick high kind of mentality. I'm going to sin on Saturday night and then I'm coming to church on Sunday morning to stand in the prayer line to get prayer. Maybe I'm talking to you today. I'm talking to those that felt like the only way that I'm going to get my healing is when I come to church, I'm going to ask my leaders to pray for me and then I'm going to get my healing. This is how that some of them were comfortable because they in their own country, in their own land, they had the free will to do and worship God the way that they please. But now they have been taken from their land and now they are taken into a strange land called Babylonian. And the Babylonians have given Giving them a charge that we're going to tell you to worship how we worship. You will no longer be able to worship the God how you worship your God. You will no longer be able to pray to your God the way that you're able to pray to your God, but you're going to have to conform to the way that we do things. Now that the building is closed, we are now been sitting, sitting here for the past nine months, and we have seen a whole transformation of how we thought 
church was. We have been able to conform and see that we are not able to physically go into a building where we gather with friends and loved ones and to be able to lift our hands and worship and to be able to hear the right song that will touch our heart, to be able to get the right message and move and see that how people are getting blessed, set free and delivered. We're not able to do that on a scale of being able, and, that, and that's called worship. So now we are in a place called Babylonian and that place is called confusion. And what God has done in this season, he has taken the blinders off of the church. The church meaning that's you, not the building. He has taken the blinders off the church and to see that as you get um, taken into this strange land, will you still worship me the same way you did when you were in the land where I had given you? We didn't appreciate that when we were coming to church, when we had the free will to come in here and high five our brother and say, sister, I love you. But now that we're in this strange land, how will you worship God? Will you start becoming like the sinners? Will you start living your life like Bebe and Tay Tay? Or will you say that, wait a minute, I remember where I come from. I remember how God blessed me. I know the, 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 the precepts. I know the order on the way the things that I used to do and how they should flow. Or will you conform to the Babylonians? And what you see now, Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego said that we will not fast. We will not eat like your people eat. We will, know, we will not take the food that you do because it is not in our culture. We don't worship God that way. We will not serve your God because that's not how we were brought up. But we're going to serve God. And I'm asking you, see, Daniel had favor with those that was in charge. And he went to one of the head guys and he says that if you will allow me no, not to eat your meat or to eat your food and we will be able to serve God in the way that we serve God, we will ask that give us 30 days, give us a time frame that we'll be able to show you that we will not lack in what we do. And now time goes on, the story, and I'm speeding up here, that you'll see that after that time was over, they were more healthier, they were more goodly to look upon than those that were eating the meat or eating the food that they were trying to serve them. So they gave them their request. Do you understand that when you can hold out for God and not fall for everything, do you understand when there's a certain standard that you have in your life, God will allow you to look better than everybody else around you? God will give you the right position, the right favor that no matter what other people do, you you don't have to do what other people are doing. God will give you favor in the midst of you being in a strange land. And now Daniel now says that as we move on from this place, Daniel now is in a position of authority. God has given Daniel a place of power because of how he was able to handle himself. When everybody else was doing the opposite, Daniel made sure that he stayed on course. I want you to turn with me now to the book of Numbers, the sixth chapter, and we're going to start reading at the third verse. In, in your homes, I want you to get your Bibles and I want you to write this down because now we're asking God that how will you be able to deal in this now moment, in this now season, that thing Things are looking like they were um, going astray. We're in this place that we don't understand. We've never in our time frame been in a place like this ever before. How do we deal with issues today? How do we pray to God when we can't come to church and worship freely? How can we deal with these situations in this strange land. And now we'll see that now Daniel has been promoted in a position. Some of you out there right now, God has given you promotion. God has given you the ability to rise above situations. God has given you the authority that now he said that I'm taking you from the bottom and now I'm giving you a place of authority. Watch what happens in, number, in, in Daniel the sixth chapter. We'll start reading at the third verse. Read, Harry. Daniel the sixth chapter is beginning at the third verse. Read, sir. Then this Daniel was preferred above the presidents and the princes. Read, sir. Because an excellent spirit was in him. Read, sir. And the king thought to set him over the whole realm. Read, sir. Then the presidents and the princes Read, sir. sought to find occasion against Daniel. But see, when I shared, when I shared the earlier story about Daniel in the first chapter, he held his position. He would not compromise to their God, but he knew that I serve only one true and living God. And because of that, God blessed Daniel. See, what happens is we so busy trying to please others 
other people but not pleasing God and why you're asking God why you ain't bless me like other people are being blessed God why haven't you promoted me like I know that I should be promoted I'm more qualified I'm, I have more education I have been here longer but now you're seeing that somebody else is coming in here and getting the job that I know I should have but you look at your lifestyle look at what you're doing now you have been conforming to the ways of the world and not the ways of God read sir then the president and the prince Re, sir. sought to find occasion against Daniel Re, sir. concerning the kingdom. Re, sir. But they could find none occasion. Why, huh? Nor fault. Read. For as much as he was faithful. He was what? For he was faithful. Read, sir. Neither was there any error or fault found in him. See, you got to look at the time that took place when Daniel was in that position. Daniel looked at the fact that, wait a minute, the test's going to come, the trials are going to come, but I'm not going to lose my now moment with God. I'm going to stay in the place where God put me at. I'm not going to allow other people to cause me to turn my back on God. I remember what God did for me back then, and I know what God is doing for me right now. Some people get so caught up in saying, wait a minute, well, that was then, but wait a minute, wait God did it then, he'll do it now. Read, sir. Then these men Read, sir. said unto him, uh -huh. we should not find any occasion against this Daniel. Read, sir. Except we find it against him. Read, sir. Concerning the law of his God. Read, sir. These three presidents uh -huh. and princes assembled together. See, now people going to start talking about you. They're going to say, wait a minute. You think you holy. You think you all that. You think you ain't never made a mistake. But wait a minute, Daniel said, I ain't saying that I'm perfect. I'm not saying that I never made a mistake. How many of you out there got that kind of testimony? When I look back over my life and I see how far God has brought me, I'm not standing here today because I'm perfect. I'm not standing here telling you that you can come out of your situation because I've never made a mistake. I'm standing here today because because I've messed up one time too many. But God saw favor. He was faithful over my life and allowed me another opportunity and said, son, don't lay in your mess. Get up from that place and I'm going to give you another opportunity to get it right. That's where the church mess up at. You fall down and now you're saying that, well, I'm here. I might as well just lay here. No, get up from that place and say, God, I've been here too long. I can't keep sitting here and wiping my mud, my face in the mud. I, you call me more for this. You're going to allow me to clean up my act and you're going to allow me to get on the right narrow path. Daniel made up his mind and he said that I will not compromise to the things that are around me. I will not allow the things that I'm faced with, the, the places that I'm at, to allow me to become conformed to where I'm at. And I just want to talk to some of you today. You're sitting in a place and you're saying that, okay, church is closed. I don't have to sit here and now my leaders, my pastors are not watching me. And now I, this is my opportunity where I can do whatever I want to do. You don't have to come to church. You can dress the way that you want to dress. Yeah, you, now you got the opportunity. You can wear your Daisy Dukes. You can put on your miniskirts. You can do all of these things, fellas, that you felt that, well, since I'm not going to church, nobody knows what I am doing. But watch what Daniel does. Daniel says that because I have an excellent spirit in me, there should be something in you that said, wait a minute, I can't be like heathens. I can't be like everybody else. I can't pick up that bottle and start drinking again. I can't, God deliver me from crack cocaine. I can't pick up that cigarette because a little levit levit the whole lump. I know how I used to be. I can't listen to a certain type of music. I remember what happens when I, I listen to that type of music. That's why little Johnny is here today because there was a certain song that came on and I let my go down see what you got to understand there's certain things that will bring up the spirit of how you used to be and now God has delivered you from those things but now because you're in a strange land you're in a place that you've never been before some of you used to come to church faithfully now that you are having not to see physically somebody to see you face to face now you got the ability to watch online anytime but now when it's time to look at service now when service time is is on now you saying that something else is more important well I'm gonna go back and watch the replay because my favorite talk show is on now I'm gonna sit here and I'm gonna go eat Eat dinner with friends because this is my time that I'm gonna hang out with all these people but now there was a time that you wouldn't do that there was a time that you made sure that you darkened the, the doors of the church house there was a time that you said that no matter what happens I'm gonna still serve God but now everything else has been coming more important than what God has given you so Daniel remember how his life used to be and now he said that I won't compromise because I am in a strange land. 
And I'm talking to you today. I don't want you to compromise your integrity. I don't want you to compromise what God has done for you because I want you to think about what God did for you. I want you to remind yourself how God delivered you. I want to remind yourself when you was down and out and God picked you up and cleaned you up and turned your life around. Look back over your life and see the things that God did for you. Daniel was sitting there and he says that, wait a minute, I know that I am in position now. I'm a man of authority because of what's in me. God has blessed you because he saw something good in you. God saw something good in you and now he is giving you elevation. He has promoted you. And now they were jealous of Daniel. They were jealous of what, how God had blessed him. And now that you got a house now, you ain't got to live in no rooming house. You ain't got to live in no house that you ain't paying for. But now God is giving you a house and he's giving you income that you can now pay your own bills. Now you got your own quarters. And now you're still saying that I am going to live my life according to the way that the rest of the world is living their life. Daniel said, uh-uh, I can't do that. I can't do that. I can't, I, can't, I, can't, I can't be like everybody else. Wait a minute. I know what God did for me. There's something special about me holding my position. There's something special about me not compromising to the ways of the world. I know that if I can hold out long enough, then God's going to be there for me. God's going to fight my battles. I know people are talking about you saying you think you're good at two shoes. I know people are saying that you think you all that in a bag of chips. I don't know people are saying that you think you're holding you better than everybody else, but if you can just hold that position just for a little longer, you go see how God is going to deliver you. You go see how God is going to bless you. And I want you to look back over your life and everything that God has did in all these 300 plus days of this year. And you see that God still never left you. God didn't forsake you. God, when he was there with you when everybody else was running to the store, they couldn't find none. God still found a way to bless you. When other people were losing their job, God gave you a better job. And when people with cars was breaking down, God made sure that your car sustained. Look back over your life. Look at this year and see how far God has brought you. Now they're jealous of Daniel. They're jealous of how God has blessed him. Now they want to find a reason to bring accusations on Daniel. Daniel said, wait, wait a minute. You know, God has been too good for me. I am in this position. I got this job only because God favored me. It wasn't because I was so great. It was something that God put in me that I would not change the way that I served him. I would not change the way that I worship him. I'm going to stand here until God do what he's going to do for me in my life. Drop down to the 18th verse, Harry, and watch this. Verse 18. Yes, sir. Read. Then the king went to his palace. Read, sir. And passed the night fasting. Read, sir. Neither was the instruments of music brought before him. Watch this. And his sleep went from him watch this watch this you'll see that we're now the jealous people now have brought accusations against daniel they went to the king and said king everybody who would not serve our god should be thrown in the lion's den everybody who would not worship our god the way that we worship our god should not have position in this kingdom and the king said you're right but under their, uh, uh, the underlying motive of why they were saying that is because they were trying to bring accusations on Daniel. There are people that are trying to bring accusations upon you. They are trying to say, wait a minute, you ain't all that. There's something that's going to cause you to break. There's something that's going to cause you to go back living your lifestyle the way that you were when you were in sin. They're going to see that, wait a minute, you ain't saved. If the right thing come along, you go lose salvation. If somebody say something to you the wrong way, you go cuss them out. If I put you in the right situation, if other people are drinking dig after a while, you go start drinking. See, watch this. They, you ain't all that. If, if, if I put him in the room with some drugs, he go go back to smoking drugs. Wait a minute, you ain't all that. Wait a minute, I remember how you used to be a whoremonger and how you used to run women. If I put him around the right type of women, he go go back doing the same thing he used to do. You ain't all that. Wait a minute. I remember what you used to do. How you used to be a fornicator. How you used to be an adulterer. How you used to be a bike biter. Put him back into that same situation and watch him fall. People are trying to find accusations on you. 
They are trying to say that, wait a minute, you won't stand when trials and tests come in your life. They're looking at you and saying, wait a minute, the God that you serve, what you say, it sounds good, but you ain't going to live your life the right way. It sounds good that you, you can quote a few scriptures, but look at you when the doors are closed. They say that, all right, I see what you are. I see how you dress and I see how you look, but you still mean nasty and dark and dirty on the inside. You ain't all that. People are trying to find accusations on you. But watch what happens with Daniel. Daniel said that, wait a minute, I'm going to go in my house and I'm going to do what I've always done. Why I'm in Babylonia, I'm going to treat their subjects. I'm going to act the way that they say that they should act. But when I get back into my house, into my quarters, I'm still going to pray to my God. And when I get into my own corner, I'm still going to worship my God. But now God is showing them that when he got into that place, he would not lose what he had. Watch what happens now. They got to there and they bring accusations on Daniel. Now the king made a decree. He couldn't go back on his word. They take Daniel and they bind him up and they said, I'm going to put you in the lion's den. The king says something to Daniel. You read it in the 18th verse, Harry, and he says that if your God be with you, you going to be all right. I'm telling you out there today, there's not an if, it's not a maybe, it's not a might be. God is God that will be with you. You're going to make it out of this thing all right. They take Daniel and they put him in the den of the lions. And the Bible says they roll the stone back over there. And now I'm talking to you where you're sitting at now. Can you imagine what Daniel went through? Being dark all alone. Sitting there with all of these lions. Can you imagine how many lions was in that den? Can you imagine what he went through sitting there and saying, God, it's just me and you. If I die, I'm dying because I gave my life to you. If I, if I have to lose my life to these lions, Lord, I know you're still going to deliver me. He was in this dark place left alone. And you're saying, Pastor, what did this have to do with me? I'm talking to you today because you're in a place and you've been left alone. Your window of how they saw Daniel praying, that's the way that you are in your house. People are looking at your heart. They're looking at how you live your life and they're saying that if he lived his life this way, I'm seeing that, I'm seeing him when he walked down the street. I don't know what he does when he gets behind closed doors. I see when he's on the job, he's very quiet and she's quiet and she don't cause no trouble. But when they get home, there's something different about them. They got a prayer life with God. They're sitting there hitting their knees. They're turning their place over because they're saying to God, you got something better for me. I can't live my life like these Babylonians. I can't let my life go and be a part of this world system. I know everybody is doing this, but I can't do that. I know these ones that are out there saying that this is how the rest of the church world is living, but God, you've called me for more than this. He's in this cave with all of these lions. And he's sitting there and he said, God, I guess this is it. But I can imagine something took place while he was in there all alone in this cold, dark cave with all of these stones. He says, just me and you, God. I can't worry about what the lions is going to do to me. But because he kept his mouth open and people looked through his window and see him still praising you. Because he kept his position and he said, I'm going to continue to pray to you. Because he kept saying that, Lord, I'm going to worship you. God, while people was looking through his window, God was working something in his quiet place. They put him in the cave. And I'm quite sure the same thing he did while they was looking at him, the same thing he did when he was in the cave. He said, while I'm here, before these lions devour me, God, I'm going to do the thing that I've always done. I'm going to worship you. While you're in the midst of your struggles, while you're in the midst of your trials, you got to say, God, I'm still going to worship you. I'm not going to lose my praise because things are getting tough. I'm not going to lose my praise because my money is funny. But Lord, I'm going to still worship you. While he was in that dark and cold place, he still gave God his worship. And what God did, because he's opened his mouth wide through his windows, God closed the mouth of the lions in his dark place. 
while people are trying to find accusations with you as long as you can continue to give God your worship see Daniel remember something he came from the tribe of Judah but God put him in a place that he did not know and because he was still there he said that I know the only thing that I know what to do I got to give God my worship the only thing that I know that I got to do is hold on to the Word of God the only thing that I know I got left in me is give God my worship I'm going to pray and give it to you today, God. I'm going to pray and I'm going to make sure that everything that I have, Lord, I'm giving it to you. Why are you sitting in your homes? Why are you sitting in that lonely place? I want you to do what you do best. Give God his worship. Why are you sitting there left all alone and all the kids are in the bed? I want you to make sure that you can give God his praise. Don't sit there and conform your life to the ways of the world. But remember what God did for you. Remember where he brought you from. Because God has brought you from a mighty long way. You see everybody else doing something different. But don't give up on what God did for you. And when I leave you with this. God said remind the people. The same way that I did with Daniel. I took him from the land that he was familiar with. I put him in a land where he did not know to see what and how he was going to live his life. The building is closed. You were familiar with coming to church on Sundays. You were familiar with paying your tithes because somebody was watching you. You were familiar with giving your offering because now I want everybody to know what I can give, but now nobody can see what you're doing. Nobody can see that how you can get all dressed up because you're in that quiet place. You're in that lonely place. God said, I'm going to take you from the place of familiarity and now I'm going to put you into a place that you don't know. It's going to get tough. It's going to get rough. But while you're sitting here, what are you going to do? Remember what I did for you in the land. Remember what I did for you when you were able to come in here on midweek Bible study. Remember how I did for you when you were coming here for corporate prayer. Remember how I did for you when you were sick and you said, Lord, I don't know what I'm going to do. The doctors gave up on me. Remember what you were going to do when you cried out and said, Lord, can you deliver me from this? I'm tired of committing the same old sin. I remember when I was bound in sin and I said, God, will you deliver me? I remember when I was going through and I said, Lord, nobody knows what I'm going through, but I'm sitting here and I come to church and I will smile and I will have a look on my face. But on the inside, I was hurting because, Lord, I was tired. And but now I'm sitting there and I'm saying that I'm in this dark and lonely place. Nobody know what I'm doing behind my closed doors. But if they had to look through my windows, I want to see. When they look through my windows, I want them to see me kneeling down to you. When they look through my windows, I want them to see me giving you worship. When they look through the window, I want them to see me studying my Bible. Because I know that, Lord, it's you that's going to make me, allow me to get out of this. That's what I want them to see when they look through my window. And no matter what happens, because of what they see that's on the inside. See, that window was, they was looking inside of Daniel's house. Now what I want them to do, I want them to see what's in your heart. And when they look and see what's in your heart, they go see the light of Christ on the inside of you. And when they see Christ on the inside of you, when they go to bring accusations against you, God is going to close the mouth of the lions. He's going to shed all the devices up. And he's going to say, that, who is he that will harm you if you be followers of that which is good? They may talk about you. They may try to run you down. They're going to try to bring accusations against you. But remember, I'm looking at you through your window. And what I see in that window is what they go going to see on the outside. And I'm going to allow all the world to know that what you do in secret, if you can hold on to what I've invested in you, you know the old saying, go trouble, ain't gonna last always. The writer tells us, weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. And when daylight came, the king had them roll back the stone and he called me, he said, Daniel! He didn't hear nothing. And I'm quite sure his heart was hurting. He was like, I'm quite sure the lions didn't divided them they've eaten them up but something in them said let me call them again 
Daniel. All of a sudden he heard a voice. He said, yes, king. And I can imagine the king's face lighting up and he said, wait a minute. I heard a voice. Is that you, Daniel? Yes, king, that's me. I told you that if you trust in your God, he will deliver you. He said, king, that's all I got. And he said, guess what happened last night? He said, when I came in here, it was dark. It was lonely. I was left alone. But the same thing I did when they called, they brought accusations on me. I looked through, they looked through the window and they saw me kneeling and praying to my God. When I got into this place all alone, I did the same thing. I prayed to my God. And you know what, King? God shut the mouth of the lions. He caused everybody that thought that I was going to give up. He closed their mouths. And he allowed me to be. And he said, y'all get Daniel out of here now because his God reigns supreme. And I want to tell you today that if you can hold on in this now moment. See, the reason why I love this sto story is that Daniel needed to be rescued. And he said, God, all I got is to give you what I have now. And that's everything that I've given you. I'm giving you back your word. I'm giving you back your worship. I'm giving you back your praise. Do that today and watch what God do for you. And if this message has been a blessing to you, I want you to do me a favor. I don't want you to delay. Delay means denial. What God is doing in this season, he's saying that those that can be obedient, those that can trust me while they're in that dark and lonely place. And you're saying that, Pastor, I hear what you're saying, but I don't have enough. But you, got, you can't afford not to do what I'm going to tell you to do. And what I'm telling you to do right now is I want you to get an offering in your hand. I want you to get a C. I want you to get your credit card out. And I want you to be able to follow the instructions on the screen. And I want you to sow that seed right now. That seed is your financial gift. And when you sow that seed, watch what God does. He's going to do what he did for Daniel. Because what Daniel did in secret, God opened it up and showed the entire world that I am with Daniel. And God told me to tell you today, God is going to do the same for you. He's going to show the world that he is with you. He's going to show you that no matter what you do, he's going to make sure every debt is paid, that every creditor will be, every bill will be met because of what you do today. And so all you got to do, the information is on the screen. You can give by dialing the number on your screen. You can give by going on the website. The information is on the screen. You can give by just picking up your phone and texting the information. And the last way you can give, by cash app. So I want you to do something today. Be guilty of being a blessing. You hear what I'm telling you? Be guilty of being a blessing. And watch what God do. Because what you do, people are looking through your window and they're seeing how you go give God your worship. And I want to say thank you. God bless you. And as we close out this year, we're entering into another chapter, another series. 2020 is being closed and we're getting ready to go into 2021. And I'll say this to you. If God sustained you in 2020, he'll do the same thing in 2021. Hold your position. Because I love a good rescue story. I love that how God will rescue you in your now. God bless you, God keep you, and let's embrace this new season in our now moment. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey guys, I wanna thank you for joining me today. But what I want you to do most importantly, I want you to help us continue to do what we do. The Bible talks about seed. In the Bible, in Genesis 8, 21 and 22, it says, as long as the earth remain, there'll be seed, time, and harvest. And when you plant a seed into this ministry, it will help produce your harvest. When you sow a seed, you continue to help us do the work of this ministry. You continue to help us to change lives. You continue to help people be blessed because of what we do. And you're responsible for making that happen. When you sow a seed into this ministry, you're helping others. So do me a favor, join us today by helping us help others.
I pray that you were blessed with the message today. Don't stop. Let's stay connected because we're always going to another level. See you again.